Hi ladies and welcome to week four. This week we're going to talk about special interest groups. Our competencies are to apply knowledge of systems-based practice to analyze and evaluate the role of special interest groups in healthcare reform and policy making on health and nursing practice. So we're going to discuss the role special interest groups um, have in healthcare reform, discuss the role of special interest groups in nursing practice, analyze the role of special interest groups in healthcare reform and policy making on health, and evaluate the role of special interest groups in healthcare reform and policy making on nursing. So here's a list of some, just some of the special interest groups. There are probably literally thousands of them. But um, we have the American Nurses Association, American Medical Association, Association for the Advancement of Retired Persons, um, which we normally hear as um, the AARP, the American Hospital Association, the National Nurses Union, Planned Parenthood, American Insurance Association, American Association of the Colleges of Nursing, and the National Association for the Advancement of Color Pe Colored People. All of these uh, special interest groups do have um, some of their special interests in nursing and medicine and hospital care. So what is a special interest group? It's a group of people or an organization seeking or receiving special advantages, typically through political lobbying. And political lobbying is a way that we use to influence lawmakers and try to convince them to vote um, what we want them to vote for. And a lobbyist is a person who tries to influence those people. So part of our assignment this week and what I want you to kind of think about is, has money and influence affected the Affordable Care Act? Um, what are your thoughts? So there's just one um, link right here that you can look at, but if you just go on to the library and search for interest groups and the ACA, you'll find many articles pertaining to it. So the ANA, the American Nurses Association, is an organization representing the interests of the nation's 3.6 million registered nurses. They advance the nursing profession by fostering high standards of nursing practice, promoting safe and ethical work environments, bolstering the health and wellness of nurses, and advocating on health care issues that affect nurses and the public. Their mission statement is um, nurses advancing your profession to improve health care or health for all. The ANA also um, is influential in credentialing and policy and advocacy. The ANCC is um, part of the ANA. Um, Magnet comes out of the ANCC. Um, continuing education comes out of the ANCC, things like that. So um, for those of you in Massachusetts, uh, the ANA Mass is the ANA's state branch, not the MNA. The MNA used to be the state's branch of the ANA, but I think it was in the early 2000s, the MNA voted to disaffiliate from the ANA. The MNA MNA stated that they believed that continuing their affiliation with the ANA would threaten their collective bargaining rights and create a situation where bargaining units may face a decertification challenge. Um, there's a link right here that kind of describes that as well. So the Massachusetts Nursing Association um, is um, a special interest group, um, but it is um, also a collective bargaining unit or a union. Um, ANA Mass is part of the ANA state branch and is not a collective bargaining unit. So the ANA as a whole isn't a collective bargaining unit, but they do support them. They support um, professional organizations, um, organization representing the diverse interests of every registered nurse. The ANA has long supported the rights of registered nurses to have the freedom of choice regarding their work environments. They have a strong track record in preserving and protecting the inalienable rights and preferences of nurses, whether or not they choose to join a union. Um, and the freedom to decide is underscored in the ANA's Code of Ethics for Nurses. Um, and again, the Code of Ethics for Nurses is um, the 
the one that is used by uh, all hospitals um, in the United States. So some constituent member associations of ANA serve as an advocate for the nurse by seeking to secure just compensation and humane working conditions for nurses by engaging in collective bargaining on behalf of them while seeking to assure just economic and general welfare for nurses. Collective bargaining nonetheless seeks to help the interest of both nurses and patients in balance. Um, safe staffing, the safe staffing issue in Massachusetts. Um, actually, both of our um, representative uh, nursing associations, the ANA Mass and the MNA, have differing views on the issue of safe, safe staffing. Um, and I'm going to, along with this video, post the white paper on that for you to look at. Um, just looking ahead to the future. Um, in May, we have, we celebrate our um, National Nurses Week, and the theme for each year usually comes from the American Nurses Association, and this year it's Nurses Inspire, Innovate, and Influence. So I think it kind of re reflects what we're studying about right now, how we as nurses can be influential. So thanks, everybody. Have a nice week, and I will see you online. Bye-bye.